Now take a look at Jokic's numbers from this postseason. <laughs> what's good it's av3 and i'm back with another video you feel me as you can already see from the title bro we all know what happened last night my dog um without wasting too much of y'all time we got mr finals mvp the most unguardable dude in the league right now he one of them because every time i look at the stat sheet why is it 30 points 20 rebounds and 10 to 15 assists huh? it's just not <laughs> it, it ain't adding up bro <laughs> it ain't it ain't it ain't adding up bro so without further ado bro i ain't finna waste too much of your time we finna hop straight into this video if you new here hit that like for me subscribe if you new and we finna get straight into this video bro if i told you just a couple years ago that there would be a player who in one postseason would eliminate LeBron James, Anthony mm, Davis, tough. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and Jimmy Butler averaged a 30-point triple-double while taking a franchise to their first NBA Finals and breaking more. I didn't know that. I didn't know. Now that's tough, bro. Sorry, Melo. We know who we retiring, bro. We know what number. We know. We know now. We know now. You still a legend, bro. But, you know, we don't know. Multiple records in the process. Would you even believe me? That's that tough. Sounds like one of the greatest runs in NBA history. And that's because it is. That's tough, bro. Um, shout out to Jimmy High Roller for the video, bro. I ain't gonna lie, my boy. And you know our I ain't gonna lie to you. Get your money. We got to get on with it. You got to come on yeah. with it. In terms yeah. of offensive brilliance, LeBron James set the gold standard for what is possible in the postseason. No. Filling up an offensive box plus minus of 12.8 back in 2009, this record has yet to be broken. That's and tough. It may never be because the next closest playoff run in terms of offense was Michael Jordan in 1991. Michael Jordan again in 1990. And then LeBron James again. Oh, yeah. Okay, bro. And then Michael Jordan again. And then our friend Nikola Jokic. Mm, and then more you won't even that's find crazy. Name on this chart until we get down to the eleventh best offensive Which is Curry. in NBA history with Steph and Curry in twenty seventeen. That's crazy. But Michael LeBron and Steph are possibly the three greatest offensive players of all time. So what does that make Nikola Jokic? Well, among the career playoff leaders in offensive box plus minus, you'll find the greatest offensive weapons the game has ever seen. Mm. Magic Johnson, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, and Michael Jordan. Ooh. So far this postseason, Jokic has managed to accomplish something that was previously thought to be impossible. That's Lead crazy. The in points, rebounds, and assists. Wow. A feat that has never been done before. But somehow this accumulation of stats is not that surprising. The man is getting triple doubles like they grow on trees. Literally, I've seen the though. Nikola Jokic next to the words triple double so much this season. I almost forgot. That's see what I'm saying. I ain't gonna pause it too much, bro. But come on, bro. Ten triple double of the playoffs. It's easy, bro. They were really hard to achieve. In fact, Nikola Jokic now has mm. 10 triple doubles this postseason alone. See what which I'm is saying? More playoff triple doubles than all but five NBA players have ever achieved in their entire career. Magic Johnson now, was wild. A big burling center like Nikola Jokic is supposed to be really good around the rim. Among mm -hmm. players with at least 1,000 career playoff shot attempts, Jokic ranks second all time in effective field goal percentage. We just now as talking about this. As this is, I kind of expected it. But you know what I didn't expect? Among players with at least 1,000 career playoff shot attempts, Jokic also ranks second in three-point percentage. Oh. That is different. Steph is at nine. I mean, he takes... I'm going to give him a little bit of it. He, he takes a little more, but that don't matter. That don't matter. Kyrie, I see you. I see you, my boy. Uh, Chris Bosh. Miller. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to analyze this list. We ain't finna just you feel me. Clay at number four above Steph. 
Wink, wink. Kawhi at five? All right, well, this is above Ray Allen is crazy. You go and pick your job off above Ray Allen is crazy. I also tell you that among high volume playoff shooters, there are only two players in NBA history who have career splits of 50, 40, 80. Kawhi Leonard and Nikola Jokic. Mm. Jokic mm -mm -mm -mm. is really good at everything. So how do you stop him? Well, what would most players do really can't. in this situation? Jokic is sandwiched between a double That's team. a pass. He's got a few options. Does he A, lob it up for Jeff Green, who's got a man sealed off? B, swing it to Jamal Murray at the top of the key? Cutter. Or C, float it above Bam and attempt to... It's a to cutter right there, too. Footer. Yeah. To see, you see... Come on, bro. I'm a point... I'm a point guard a little bit. He trying to trick us. He tried to trick y'all. Let me say y'all. He tried to trick y'all right there. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. He does none of those things. I'm too locked in, bro. Slips a pass to a cutting Christian Brown for an easy dunk. One of the best ways to describe Jokic's game is that he makes it difficult for his teammates to even make a bad play. If you're open, Ooh. he'll find you. Like this play right here. Jokic gets the mismatch on Butler in the high post. That's Lowry sees baby. This, and so he signals Highsmith to double him. Now, right away, you can see Highsmith doesn't want to commit to the double. He knows it's a bad idea. Because yeah. Because even with his man on the other side of the court, he knows Jokic can just easily do this. Yep. But in some cases, the Heat choose not to double. And since there's no one in the NBA who can guard Jokic one-on-one, -on -one, this turns into about the easiest two points you'll see in the finals. <laughs> In terms of offensive value, one thing we have trouble measuring is a player's gravity. When a player becomes a perpetual threat on offense, they leave the defense with no choice but to pick their own poison. So crazy, All the great bro. players have this effect to some extent, but the gravity Nikola Jokic imposes on the opposing defense is like some sort of black hole, pulling everything within his vicinity. That's like four or three people. Their will. On this play, Murray uses the pick and finds a rolling Jokic at the center of the defense. Once Jokic gets the ball here, Miami's already failed on this defensive possession. Look he can hit. Yeah, it's Ice all type of. the only defender within eight feet of his man. Miami is so consumed with stopping Jokic at the point of attack that they leave him with three open options. Literally, bro. From. Here's another play from just a few possessions later. It's Literally. A action, but Jokic gets That's the a ball pass the immediately. And this time, instead of completely collapsing, or, the Heat play the passing lane, and Jokic gets a wide open floater. Mm -hmm. What exactly are they supposed to do in this situation? It's too and nothing. This gravity that Jokic imposes on the defense has a reverse effect on his team. One of the many negative side effects to ISO heavy ball is that even if the player getting the majority of the shots is the best option, it completely disincentivizes his teammates from moving without the ball. Right. Now, since they're less willing to run around and make cuts for what feels like no reason, these teammates end up standing around even more, leading to them being open even less, leading to an ISO heavy player passing even less, and it just snowballs until your offense is completely stagnant. But right. When Jokic has the ball, his teammates are engaged. It's disgusting. If they get open, he will find them. Like this play right here. Jokic sets a screen for Murray and bah. seals Butler off. Jamal Murray looks to feed Jokic the ball. But look in the corner. Michael Porter Jr. is already cut into the <laughs> basket. And Jokic doesn't even have the ball yet. Porter instinctively knows that if he gets open, Jokic is going to find him. Now these are basic motions any team will go through depending on the set. But how many players can still execute the pass that leads to the layup? But Jokic's gravity only works if he is a threat to score the ball. True. Unfortunately for the Heat, he's really good at that too. Have you ever seen a player get a reluctant 41 points? It's not fancy. It's not loud. Half the time, it doesn't even matter. And yet, no one has found a way to stop it. Everyone. It's literally impossible. For one. Brody just too, Brody just too big, bro. That's just, that's just. And then once he swing, once he swing and open up, somebody else go help. Like he said, somebody else go help. And that's going to leave two to three people wide open every time. Not to mention, have y'all seen some of the shots this boy been hitting, bro? Oh, man. I ain't going to lie. The way they did the Lakers, bro, they might never forget that, bro. I'm off that, bro. I'm off that. I'm off that. One knows just how incredible Jokic is at creating offense with his passing, but I don't think the magnitude of this skill set is emphasized enough. Shaquille O'Neal holds the title as the most dominant player of all time. 
Yeah. He couldn't hit a free throw. He wasn't the type to survey the floor for open teammates. But none of that mattered because there wasn't a soul on earth that could guard him. Nope. But what if Shaq could knock down his free throws? What if he was one of the greatest playmakers of all time? He'd be the greatest ever. What if he could hit threes? He'd probably have been the greatest player to ever touch a basketball. Ever. Right? Look, that's too, well, that's too unbalanced. In the playoffs, Shaq had the greatest postseason run of his career, averaging nearly 31 points, 15 rebounds, and three assists on 57% shooting. <sighs> this was his masterpiece. Now take a look at Jokic's numbers from this postseason. Shaq I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's better. The 10 assists means you accounted for more points than said, you know, because they both get 30. Two more rebounds, so, so what? whatever. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Shaq, by the way. Field goal percentage is pretty much the same. Jokic is shooting jump shots, though. Free throw percentage, obviously. I mean, come on now. History point percentage is not even available. <laughs> this is crazy, dog was one of a kind because he was so unstoppable that he didn't need any variance in his game but right now Nikola Jokic is dominating the game like a prime Shaquille O'Neal while shooting 47 percent from three while hitting 80 percent of his free throws while orchestrating the offense nearly every this single is possession. crazy Jokic is becoming one of the most lethal offensive weapons the game has ever seen ever and he's doing it in a way that only he could among the greatest offensive players of all time, here's a chart of their best playoff runs in terms of points generated. That's points a player created through both scoring and assists. Mm, 30 is he the at the top. Here, but most all-time greats surpass that total. KG, Barkley, and Carmelo all had playoff runs where they generated about 35 points a game. Dwayne Wade is the first player on this list to crack 40 points generated per game in a mm. playoff run. Giannis, Kareem, and Steph I see you, Bert. averaging about 42 points generated wow. per game. Keep climbing and you'll find the nine players who surpassed the coveted 45 Jesus points. Christ. Six of them did it in the modern NBA. Allen Iverson's best playoff run that came in 2001, Luka in 2022, Jordan in 1990, Magic in 1986, LeBron in 2018, and Nikola Jokic this season. Jesus Christ. More offense than any player in any season ever so where's y'all we all ranking him bro because this this is obviously not all time this is his first ring let's slow down right let's slow down you feel me but in terms of this playoff run where's y'all ranking this playoff run in particular because this is crazy this is crazy Jimmy Butler, bro. Let me just say this real quick before I get back to Jokic. That's tough. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I seen a couple highlights, dog. It was a, it was, it was a lid on that rim, bro. For you, I don't know what. Nah, that's tough. I will go cry in the car, dog. <laughs> I'm crying in the car, dog, because some of them shots. Just wasn't your night, bro. It wasn't your series. You weren't supposed to win this. You weren't supposed to win this. But with that being said, bro, like I said at the beginning, I'm sorry, Melo. Jokic got you, bro. All it took was, I mean, they, people already said it was going to be Joker. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. You should have picked a different number. I mean, but if you enjoyed that video, shout out to, I think it's Jimmy High Roller. I think that's, you know what I'm saying? Because he had an X and all that in, in the name. You feel me? Shout out to him for the video. If you like this video, though, subscribe to the channel. Give me a like because, you know, YouTube don't always recommend. Comment your suggestions below. We out of here, bro. I'm going to see y'all in the next video.